Let's open our service this morning with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you remain a good God to us. We are here again to say thank you for your love, for your protection, for your care throughout the week. Once again, we gather before you. You have brought us here that we may worship you, Lord. Father Jesus, we pray, even as we come before you in repentance, we pray that you may forgive us, even as we come before your throne. The word reminds us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But when we come before you in repentance and trust, you will remain a faithful father, and you forgive us our sins. This morning, Lord, we pray that you forgive us. Lord, accept our praises and worship that we are about to give to you, O Lord. We commit this service unto your very able hand that you may begin with us even as you destroy and you uh, take away every hindrance, every spirit of confusion. We come against in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We welcome you that you take over this service right now from the beginning until the end. And your name shall be glorified every now and again. In Jesus' precious name, we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. In some we feel his praise for tell, come him before him and rejoice. Know that the Lord is God in him, without no end he did us well. We are his glory, he doth us feel. service, being the first Sunday after the Trinity, let us all kneel or sit and pray all together at Code 3. Eternal Father, God of our sisters, before your power, through our Son, we have done wrong and neglect to do right. Lord, have mercy. Don't be with us. Grant us the joy of goodness. Lighten our hearts. Who died and rose again. Amen. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ rejoices at repentance and declares his acceptance. The dead are alive. The Lord's affirm. His goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life, and you will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Today is taken from the book of First Chronicles, chapter 22, verse 1. David said, The house of the Lord God is to be here, and also the altar of burnt offering for Israel. So David gave orders to assemble the allies living in Israel, and from among them he appointed stone cutters to prepare dressed stones for building the house of, the, of God. He provided a large amount of iron to make nails for the doors of the gateways and for the fitting and more bronze than could be weighed. He also provided more sea dialogues than could be counted. For the Sidonians and Italians had brought large numbers of them to David. David said, My son Solomon is young and inexperienced, and the house to be built for the Lord should be of greater magnificence and frame and splendor in the sight of all the nations. Therefore, I will make preparations for it. So David made extensive preparations before his death. And this is the word of God. Let's pray the prayer appointed for today, being the first Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. O oh God, our Father, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus, healed and restored men to perfect health, we pray that you you will extend your masses today to all the sick in our midst, touching them with your divine hand and healing them from all the afflicts and weighs them down. Through Jesus Christ, 
the greater physician. Amen.
gracious Redeemer, as we sit at your feet, we pray that you will speak to us and cause this word to make sense in our lives. I pray that, Lord, your Holy Spirit will have his way to teach us, encourage us, equip us for your service. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It is another day that the Lord has given and the Lord has called us to come together and worship him in his sanctuary. Today, I would like us to share something different. And I'm talking about fathering a destiny. And uh, when you talk about fathering a destiny, I'm talking about uh, growing spiritual sons and spiritual daughters. The destiny is not about you, it's not about me, it is about others. It concerns spiritual sons and spiritual daughters that we are expected to, to raise. I want to begin by saying that if you look at our society today, there are so many things that are happening, um, things that are happening that needs to be transformed. And when you talk about the society, the church is part of the society. Because the congregation or those who believe in Christ belong to a particular community or a nation. And therefore there are so many things that need transformation. I've always been telling people that reformation never came to an end. There are things that need to be reformed even today in our society and more particularly in the church. Why am I saying that? Because God wants us to raise and release Christians who can influence every sphere of the society. He wants to do this through spiritual fathers. What the society is lacking today is spiritual fathers. If I may begin in the church, looking at the hierarchy of the church, from the archbishops to the bishops to the normal priests, ordinary priests. How many of those who are called in the ordained ministry are fathers? People who are not shepherding, but people who are, are concerned about the destiny of other people. The church is said to be the voice of the voiceless. And if you read the Bible, the gospel according to Matthew chapter number 5 when Jesus was teaching on the mountain the church is the light the church is the salt of the earth but what is the church doing today where is the voice of the church and you will bear me witness if I'm not wrong the strong voices of strong men, anointed men of God, ended during the times of Dr. Uh, Bishop Muge, Dr. Henry Okulu, and our retired the late Archbishop Gitari. From that time to date, the church is silent. And many things are happening in the political sphere, socially, where the church is expected to raise a voice and condemn the evils of society, but the church is silent. And therefore we are raising a nation, we are raising a generation which is hopeless without a destiny. And that is why this topic, fathering a destiny and raising spiritual sons and daughters becomes very important for us to understand. God wants us, as I've said, to raise a generation, release a generation that is going to influence every sphere of human society. And we must live to see others enter into God's glorious destiny 
uh, of being conformed to the ministry and image of his son, Jesus Christ. People must be transformed. People must enter into the ministry and the image of his son. And talk about the image of his son. We must be Christ-like. By word, by deed, by our lifestyle, we must be a reflection of who Christ is. I want us to make a note here that fathering is not about age or a title. It is a function. It is a function. There are many fathers who don't qualify to be called fathers. But they have physical children. But they don't have qualities of them being fathers. So that's why I'm saying it is not a question of age. It is a question of a function. It's an office. It is more than mentoring. It is more than discipleship. All this mentoring and discipleship are essentials for every Christian. Discipleship is a systematic transformation, a systematic transformation of people's life from spiritual darkness to, to light, to the light of Christ. We become disciples of Christ when we are growing to be like him. It is not a just a matter of saying, I love Jesus Christ as my savior. It is just, it's a question of being like him. Fathering is distinct. It is next generational. So when we talk about fathering, we are not looking at a disciple today. We are looking at a disciple in the next generation. What are you going to leave behind when you are not there? What am I going to leave behind when I leave this parish? Shall I have left sons and daughters who will continue the work of ministry in the church? That is what is lacking today. We have even seen pastors who are killing the gifts of young Christians who are growing. Instead of fathering them so that they can become, they are doing all that they can to destroy them. It is happening in the church today. Praise the name of the living God. So fathering involves fathering each person's unique destiny be a person who has a father's heart you cannot have you cannot be a father if you, you don't have a father's heart kuna baba asiyekuwa na moyo ama roho ya ubaba na pia kuna mama asiyekuwa na moyo wa mama ndipo sasa tunakuta wengine wanazaa na wanatumbukiza watoto wao kwa mapipa na kuenda lakini si ni mama so it is not about giving birth. It is about having the heart of a father. And that is what I'm talking about. Praise the name of the living God. Fathering is done intentionally and systematic. It builds, it builds a person. It builds a person's abilities. It encourages, it equips the person. And then after all that, it releases sons and daughters into their destiny to transform the lives of others in the next generation. So it is not about me, it's not about you, it's not, a, it's not about our generation today. When you talk about fathering our destiny, it involves generations and generations to come. Fathering has nothing to do with gender. And when I talk about a father, I can see how the mamas are looking at me. When you talk about fathering, it's not about gender. I think your hearts. It's not a question about gender. It's not about gender. It's an expression of a function that takes place when one understands the fathering role in a family. There are also fathers in a family who have even sold uh, their, I don't know what to call it. They have sold, I, I, I want to use a very light word, 
but their, their, their responsibilities. They have handed over their responsibilities. Unakuta kwa nyumba, mama ndiye ba, ndiye baba. And that is why I'm talking about, it's not about gender here. It's about a function. Yeah? There are mothers who are fathers in their families. And there are fathers who are mothers in their families. It happens. Mothers are becoming fathers in the family and the fathers are also becoming mothers in the family. Now exchange of gender roles is taking place in fact in today's society. I pray that I don't become a victim of such a circumstance. From the reading of First Chronicles chapter number 25 and in particular verse 5 David has become a father. David became a father in the true sense of the word. He made sure that his son Solomon was going to be a successful king by intentionally fathering him. Make others successful. Be happy when you see other people are prospering. Be happy. Join them in their joy. I know some people are not very much happy when they see other people prospering. When they see other people growing in the, in the talents, eh? they are not happy. They are not happy. But that is not the heart of a father. The heart of a father is seeing other people joining and growing and becoming successful in their destinies. But I want us to know that before one becomes a father, you must become a son or a daughter in the kingdom of God. How can you father somebody before becoming a son? Is it possible? You must become a son and becoming a son means accepting Jesus Christ. I was talking about living Christ-like life. So when you live Christ-like life, then you become a son in the kingdom of God. You only become a son by accepting Jesus Christ. Now when you, you accept Jesus Christ, you will grow in the image of Christ. There is a difference between knowing about being a son, that is information, and becoming one, that is formation. And many of us Christians have information about how you become a Christian. We have the information. And we know very well that you cannot become a Christian unless you are born again. That's the information. But how many of us have accepted that information and transformed it to personal life? And that's what I'm talking about. There is formation which is very key. Christ must be formed. When you know Christ, and you live Christ like, uh, like life, then you have been formed into the image of Jesus Christ. Christ has to be formed in me because I could be led, before I could be led by the Spirit of God. When I used to ask him, then from there I can become a, 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 a spiritual father. And the Anglicans have a problem. The Anglicans have a problem. I'm talking because I'm also an Anglican, and this is a problem that we have been having ages past, that we don't want to be born again. We don't want to be born again. We are contented. We are going to be able 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 to be to be spirituality about But we have not taken a step of accepting Christ as our personal Savior so that we can become sons and daughters in his kingdom. You must accept Jesus before you become a father. There is this person who is called Benjamin Israel is a scholar and Benjamin Israel wrote and I quote that the legacy of heroes is the memory of a great name and the inheritance of a great example. 
that the legacy of heroes is the memory of a great name and the inheritance of a great example. Today, I am not so much interested in the great name because I know all of us are struggling to become great. I'm not interested in that, but I am very much passionate about the inheritance. When we talk about the inheritance, we are talking about the legacy that you and I are called to grow in the lives of those we must intentionally find. That legacy is my interest. What are you going to leave behind when you are not there? What is it that people will remember you for when you are not there? What legacy are you leaving? Tutacha masifo ya kula tu? Tutacha masifo ya kuhalibu wengine? Tutacha masifo ya mengine ya siyo pendeza mungu? Ama ni legacy gani tutacha when we are not there? This is a challenge for us Christians. You cannot be in Mikindani for all those years and you live when you go out of this place, people forget about you. The moment you get out of the gate, that's the end of you. Na wengine anasema asante umaondoka tutakumzika angalau. The legacy. What are you going to leave behind? Because always people remember you for what you left. They remember you for that. Ukiwa na vijitabia vya kishetani shetani, people will remember you for those vijitabia vyako. Wana asifiwe mcheza ngoma? Wana yesu asifiwe? Amen. So, legacy is very important. It is the only legacy we should desire to, to desire in life. What is that legacy that you desire in life? Empowering others to become like you. Empowering others to become like Christ. So that they can also go and empower other people. And I think that is why Christ called the disciples, sent the disciples and said, go ye to the world and make Disciples of the world. Go into the world. Making disciples is about fathering a destiny of other people. This revelation that you need to become a spiritual father today is very important. We need to realize that every one of us, you and I, were called and created for a purpose. And our purpose always includes other people. It is not about you. Sometimes we are very selfish even when it comes to prayer. It is me, 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 and me alone. What about other people? Don't you know that there is a blessing when you start remembering others in prayer? But I guess what I feel. There's a blessing. Instead of praying for yourself, remember others. Pray for others. And tell God now, Unapu wazuru hawa, kumbuka mimi. But I guess what I feel. Na mungu wana kujibu Because you have taken the burden of other people The destiny, the future Includes other people It is not about you It's about other people Praise the name of the living God I want to believe That We only come into fulfill, fulfillment Of that purpose when We start to pour our lives into others. I have learned one thing. Sometimes in my life, I may be overwhelmed by so many things. But the moment I start serving and ministering to people, I see the burdens in me go one by one by one. When you start pouring your life to others, the Lord also ministers to you. Hallelujah. This is the true meaning of success when we have a successor behind us. And the problem of Mtumia Muhammad is that he died without leaving a successor. And that is the beginning where Islam started splitting into two, two, two other uh, call it divisions, subdivisions. 
because there was no successor. It's a problem. You are living, you are dying as a father, and you don't have, you have not appointed somebody to succeed you. It's a problem. You are living a problem in the family. And this is also happening in the society. If you look at the political field, you see these things happening. Successors have been groomed. They are being groomed to become. Yeah? And that's why you see in the politics in Kenya, uh, the, 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 the seats of the presidents just revolves around particular families because people are prepared to take over responsibilities. And most of us will end up complaining until we die. That will never happen to us. Because our fathers never prepared us for such a heavy task. Praise the name of the living God. Life is all about living your purpose. It is called a destiny. This purpose is called a destiny. There is no expiry date on that destiny. No expiry date. Not just any destiny. I'm talking about the destiny that God has created for you. And this is the divine destiny. Compare the concept of Jesus Christ on fathering the twelve, who later became the foundation of the Christian church today. Jesus walked with the disciples for how many years? Those who know the Bible, how many years? How many years did Jesus stay here? How many years? Okay, that is your homework. But for three years, Jesus walked his disciples with his disciples. So they were in archaeological training for almost three years before Jesus sent them. Matthew 16, verse 15 to 18. You need to discover the destiny or purpose that God has given for you. And I know that most of us know that God knows he has a good plan for me. But do you know that plan? And how do you get there? How you get there is the challenge. Yes, God has a plan for you. But how do you get to that plan? That God-given plan in our lives. As I finish, I want to say that the key to happiness is finding your God-given destiny and living it. Remember, as I have said earlier, that your destiny includes others too. It is not about me, it's not about you, it includes other people. I want to say this, I want to ask you this. Have you fathered somebody? Have you fathered somebody? For the time since you became a Christian, have you fathered somebody? That's your question. Have you fathered somebody? Is there a legacy left behind for the generation to come when you are not there? Our calling as Christians is to be fruitful and multiply. We are called to be fruitful and multiply. And I'm challenging you this morning that you become a father in the true sense of the word. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless and keep you. Therefore, brethren, having heard the word of God, we stand together as Christians throughout the century, throughout the world today, to confirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father of God.
to you. Almighty God, you have been our God through the night. Keep us in your care through the day, walking in the light, bearing witness to your way, seeking first your kingdom, and seeing you in everyone. Guide us in the footsteps of your Son, and lead us on the path to your everlasting day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We want to make a prayer for church unity. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who loved the church and gave us yourself for her through your Son, Jesus Christ, may it 
place you to sanctify and uphold this church by your word. Where we are weak, strengthen us. Where we are defenseless, be our defense. When we are corrupt, we beseech you to purge and cleanse us. When we are in error, as we often are, correct and guide us. Heal our breaches, O oh God, and save us from needless divisions and preserve us from rivalry and bigotry. Teach us how to live in unity and in peace, bearing with one another where we differ and bring us into a closer, deeper fellowship with you through Jesus Christ, our mediator and Lord. We want also to pray for those that are sick. Heavenly Father, we bring to you, Lord, people with diseases that doctors have described as terminal. We bring to you people whose diseases have not yet been diagnosed. We bring to you, Lord, people who have been diagnosed as HIV positive. We bring to you people that who have been diagnosed as corona positive. We bring to you, Lord, people who have been maimed through accidents. We bring to you, Lord, people who have been deprived of love and friendship and are in a state of deep loneliness. We bring to you, Lord, those who are suffering from numerous other conditions and who need your healing. And now, Lord, Father, we pray that you sanctify this hour as we stand before you in your holy presence. We lift our hearts and waiting in faith and hope for the opening of your healing springs. Open them now, Lord, as we stand awe of your supreme majesty and heal this, your people, of all that weighs them down, physically, emotionally, and psychologically. Release those whom Satan has held captive. Comfort the disturbed and the distressed in spirit. Heal those who may be nursing deep hearts arising from separation. Divorce, fold, or strained relationship. Those deeply devastated by the loss of loved ones. Heal and forgive those that may be suffering from restlessness and guilt due to unrepented sin. Our Lord, the friend Lord, look upon who are involved in the vigorous work of medical research. Grant them perseverance and renewed energy in their crucial service to humanity. Bless and keep who, all who are involved in the care of the sick like nurses and doctors and the dying both at home and in hospital. Fill them with your love, patience, and courage. In simple faith, we come to you to draw from your healing strength. We ask this, trusting in the name of him who lives and reigns forever, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And now, finally, we make a prayer of St. Christostom together. Almighty God, by your grace, we have come together at this time to bring our united prayers to you. And you are promised by your Son, Jesus Christ, and where two or three are gathered in his name, he will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O oh Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth in the world to come, life everlasting. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, may the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ fill all of you with joy and peace in believing that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope and the blessing of God Almighty Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.
Oh, no. 